the place for a few minutes. And <laughs> see. side now to attempt to tell everybody that the game's over and they've yeah. won. And uh, I wanted to kind of hear from you. That's that psychology right now. Yeah. But uh, how near are they to being right? <laughs> well, I think uh, they're like strong, but I, I don't think they're near at all. I think we, we're going to win this thing. It's going to take a lot of work. Uh, Mr. President, <clears throat> all the Republicans have come out. I have doubts about Deacon Senior. I was hoping one time we might get him, and we still might, but I think y'all might be the other way. Um, we have contributed every charge in the world, and by reliable people. Uh, we had any number of former attorney general there. Uh, the last day, of, the day before the last day, we had six law school deans and four other specialist on the antitrust that raised those questions. And of course we had the Chief Justice and and, and, and we had um, uh, the attorney for Carla there, Mr. Um, Griffin Bell, yeah. And I think we're really making that impressive. 
effect. I don't think we'll get deep and see me either. Fart in the windstorm. You never know where he is at all, ever. But, but I tell you, I think it's very, I think it's winnable, and, I, and it's going to be winnable when we get to the floor and watch Danforth weigh in and some other thoughtful people, uh, and, and 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 get to the issue of sterilization of fellow humans and black, black anti-Semitism. Those things are repugnant and they have no place in this debate. And that's the kind of stuff. I heard you say something important. <laughs> I said it was important that I not take your speech. <laughs> but it isn't really much of a speech here. I just, first of all, want to thank all of you for coming and thanks for all that you've done to support my nomination of Robert Bork. I know that many of you know Bob personally, so you know firsthand about his qualifications and his brilliant legal mind. As you've seen in the hearings, witness after witness, from Chief Justice Warren Berger to Lloyd Cutler continued to attest to his experience, his character, and sheer intellectual capacity. But there are legal interests that continue an unprecedented attack on Bob Ward for one reason and one reason alone. They want a liberal judge who will make the law, not a judge to interpret the law. And they want a judge who will commit in advance to support their special interests not a judge who will only commit to uphold the Constitution. I don't want either of those. Neither does Bob Bork, and I don't think you do either. As I'm sure Howard has told you, it's not good for business and it's not good for America. Robert Bork should be confirmed. That's why I invited each of you here today to ask for your continued help, additional help to make that a reality. And I hope you'll do all you can to let your senators know how important this vote really is for you. I'm afraid that there are some of them there who are listening to some of the raucous voices from outside that don't really know what they're talking about. But now, I'll stop there and before somebody interrupts me and, <laughs> and ask if you have any questions. And if you have, I've got the right people on here to give you information you need. Mr. And then, President, uh, Mr. Mercer. <laughs> well, come in. You tell me where. Right here in the left chair. Got a document here. Here's a jello swell. What's wrong with that? Uh, I got a. I think part of my problem is cold sinus. Oh. Right sinus. You reckon you could just breathe in and not breathe out so I'm, you don't catch it? There are a lot of my people that back in Vermont would prefer I just stop breathing. <laughs> <laughs> now you know. I used to be a chronic. Sinus sufferer and were you? Yep, yeah. yeah. but you guys, you know what? Then one day I found out I had allergies. <laughs> it was allergies. <laughs> and I've been taking sinus shots, or I mean the allergy shots ever since, and far better. Well, but I would regularly have a sinus infection. Okay. Yeah. About once a year. That's all, thank goodness. I do get it. It's a little cold. Is it the same time of year, though? It's happened this time last year. But usually it comes in the spring when I change my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Bob, I appreciate your coming down, and I wanted to, to talk to you about the Bork situation. I, I sort of guess that. I figured that you'd understand that. I just, uh, I feel that this has been. Hey, 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 Mr. Baxter, my staff director. Here. Here is the chair. You're looking well. Good. I don't. I've got a sore throat, so stay away from you. <laughs> All right. Well, I usually have a rasp most of the time. I don't know. It's a rasp. We know what it is. Well, I'm a, I'm a hey, I'm allergy patient. Are you, oh, yes. are you an addict? I get shots every yep. three weeks. I did too. I have for about 20 years now. Matter of fact, every week with me. You do it every week. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to step it up. And uh, I happen to have served and now in the two allergy capitals of the world, yeah. Sacramento, California, and now Washington, D.C. I just learned the other day that Washington has a greater variety of trees than any city in the United I did States. Too. Yeah, that's what my allergy doctor told me. Yeah. It's one of the worst places. Yeah. And this is the worst time of the year right now. Well, listen now, I have a feeling now that we can probably clear up our allergies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the right decision. Let's... <laughs> 
How are you? Hello, Mr. President. How are you today? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Come in. Thank you for having me over. <laughs> Where are you on? Yeah, which chair you want me on? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, here I am again. About the only time you have me up here is when you need me. Uh, <laughs> it works both ways. <laughs> well, I sure need you. Too. <laughs> you and I have had a little experience with appointing judges. We have. We have. And uh, I just, uh, I really uh, have said and sworn back when I was governor and now that I, politics will play no part in the selection of a judge. I made no effort to find out whether he, whether he was a Democrat or a Republican, and I appointed him on the basis of his record as a judge. And uh, I just think that uh, there has, this has gotten down to a kind of contest that is out of keeping with a confirmation hearing. I would agree with that, Mr. President. I think it's gotten. See you. Come in. Take the Thank chair you. over there. On the which, which, which one is the hot? Who has the hot seat? <laughs> this one's still warm for me sitting there. <laughs> hey. I know you're just filled with curiosity as to why I wanted to see you. Well, I, had, I, had, I had three guesses and they were all the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I know that this has become quite a contest up there. And and I think with some overtones that don't belong in the information hearing. And I just wanted to get in the pitch for this man that I have chosen, and I chose him not on the basis of any political philosophy, but on the basis of a record that some 400 decisions he's made and none of them ever reversed, and many of them upheld by the uh, Supreme Court. I don't think any were ever overturned by the Supreme Court. And I. I think it's going to be a tragedy if what has become a kind of partisan political contest is used and he'll be marked for life and I don't think he deserves that. 